and I'm just like a little confused for it's just very chaotic in this class. Well, let's if if you think this is what the instructor wants. Yeah. Then we will uh, go with that. So four is the next one. Yeah. All right. So question four is x equals twelve minus y. X equals twelve minus y. So what I'm doing on my side is I am um, snipping these into two places. I'm snipping them into that that normal PDF I send you, and then I'm also putting them into a um, work Word document. Um, are you familiar with Desmos to be able to do this on your own? Yeah, I have an account and stuff. Okay, so uh, you're not. There's nothing new here, I guess. So so far that. that um, uh, no, not so far. But in class, we've done stuff with like limits, and I'm just really lost on that. All right, so we're up to twelve. Are what? Are you in pre-calculus? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. So question twelve is here. Mm -hmm. All right, so 12 is y equals 1 over x plus, hardest part's remembering, 5 over x minus 3, something like that, okay? And yeah. uh, snip that in. Okay. Actually, I take back, I'm not going to keep snipping these into the... Uh, that workspace, I'll just put them into that document. I don't think that's going to be relevant. So that document, I'm up to 12. Okay. That'll be, that'll be that. Next one is 14. 14. All right, so we have y equals, actually, you know what I need to do? No, that's fine. It's a uh, square root of four minus X squared. And then X minus three. So you might think, oh, that's odd, but that's a domain restriction on that. Um, okay. Instructors will appreciate you not like snipping the entire window and kind of zooming in a little bit on it to make it uh, clear. Okay. All right, so that gets, that's 14, we're up to 18. 18 here is, and we don't have to do anything else. We don't need to like find the range of the function. Nope, all it said was plot in Desmos and send me pictures, so. Okay. Well, that's that's sure a lot of busy work. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, after you do one, you're sort of like, okay, I got it. Five plus. Hardest part is remembering square root four minus x. Okay. Zooming out to you know kind of see stuff. I mean, things yeah. like that. That's um, okay. So that is what, what which question are we up to? That was 18. I just wrote that down. Uh -huh. What's the next um, one? Yeah. Sure. Um 22. All right. Let me I'm getting far enough in. I probably should save this. So let me do that before I get too much further. Otherwise, you know, worse things than have happened where you can't recover this learning for students, notes, and it's here, so it's 2000. I don't know what, to, I'll just put this at the top, 2021, 08, 24 at, all right. So do have that saved, okay. We'll keep going here. Number 22 is, is uh, x cubed plus x over x. Okay, this looks like that. Snip that in. Okay. 
right? And then we're up to 24. Yeah. 24, we've got 24 now. Um, okay, so another function here, y equals x over x minus two. This one's got a vertical asymptote. I mean, this is me just adding a little bit here. That's that's the vertical asymptote there. Mm -hmm. um, your instructor doesn't want that, but um, that that's what's going on. So we'll snip that in. Actually, let me give a little more of a window there. Twenty eight is next. Go twenty eight. Twenty eight is down here at the bottom. So this I can't graph. Did I miss something here? Oh. Hmm. Well, that doesn't seem right. I agree. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Okay, good. We're just going to skip that yeah. and, um, and move past it because we don't know what, what's wanted there. 30 and then 60. Yeah. Um, so th there's, it's not, I'm sorry to keep asking, like, is, is 60 the only one you're supposed to plot? I hope that's All not right. the case. Me, I'll read it out. Um, this didn't take that much time, but it's just, it's yeah, just... I mean, it was the very first homework, too, um, but let me, all right, it says, make your plots in Desmos and upload a copy to Google Classroom. That's all it says. Yeah, I think you're good. I think, because uh, this one is asking you to do some, like, pretty advanced stuff to find, like, increasing, decreasing, and constant, um, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, that, that one we just talked about, 28, you can't graph because it's already graphed. Yeah. And then 60 is the last one. Four over X squared plus one. All right, and there's your graph of that. Is that an exponential? It's it's uh it looks more like the normal distribution. Um, it, it grows to a point and then it comes back down on each side. Uh, oh, yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting one, but um, I don't know. I don't know what you're so that so that takes care of that that first part. Um. Now we got page 106, number two. And I'm assuming that that's just a continuation. Yep, there it is. There it is, number two. Okay, so these are matching exercises. Is that right? Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going to switch to... Um, I'm going to switch to the other window. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of do this the more conventional way. We've always done it here. And uh, let's see here. So if you're seeing my screen, you should see when I start snipping stuff in here, we've yeah. got we've got this to think about, and then we've got the I'm gonna snip in the graphs and we'll just there's three at a time here. Those and then we'll scroll down here and snip the uh, the other ones in. Did I get those? Did I get those? Okay. All right. And those will come up. Okay. So number two, number two says, is asking you, um, what is this gra a graph of? And it's hard for me not to just tell you it's letter G, um, absolute value functions V. Mm -hmm. And that's the only one that that V's. Yeah. That's number two. There's no work for that. 
number four, number four right here, this one oscillates. So the, well, it's, it's either A or B. Oh, it's a cosine because it goes down first, right? That is actually sine. So I think that's why your instructor wanted, wanted you to use Desmos. Um, this one oscillates and you can you can actually go to Desmos and, and graph y equals minus sine x and see if um, you know see that it looks the same if you want you don't you obviously don't have to yeah um, number six number six here so number six is this graph here this is a u-shaped graph mm -hmm. so that's some sort of quadratics so like the, the list here can be a little overwhelming it looks like it could be f and that's the only one that it could be. Yeah. So, so this is a this is a quadratic. It it's it's the U U shaped. Mm -hmm. And so on. Uh, ten 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 is over here. This one's got an exponential shape. So I think the idea was you would actually graph all of these and then just match them up, maybe. Um, this is an exponential growth model. So that's that's probably E. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if there's any other exponential ones that are there. L? This, L, uh, I'm sorry? Is that but, L? Is that, is that an exponential? It is, but see the slash? That's, that's some weird stuff too oh. going on. Um, I mean, the short of it is it's it's e, <laughs> uh, because it, it's it's an exponential growth. Yeah. Sorry, there's not a ton of learning right now, but right. Um, it's, it's like it's early. <laughs> Twelve also oscillates, and since four was a. 12, oh, that's so fine. Twelve must so be b. Easy. Yes. And it also oscillates. Got it. All right, we're up to fourteen. We're up to 14. Uh, okay. Identify which dis functions whose domain consists of all non-negative. Why did they say that? OK. Gosh, it's like you got to have, have an understanding of the English language to understand what they're talking about. <laughs> OK, let's see here. Uh, functions whose domain consists of all non-negative real numbers. So if it's not negative, that means it's zero or more. You know, so it's zero to infinity. Yes. That's what it's looking for. Yes, yes. And let me, so one of the nice things about what I've got here is I can just snip these down and then yeah. we can just like cross out the ones that basically anything left of the y-axis, you can, you can start crossing out because that's that's what this means. So red's a great one. See how this one's got this right here? That's out. Uh -huh. This one's got this right here. That's out. That, that's out. That's out. This, the U-shaped one, that's out. These down here, that's out. It's got that there, that's out. Basically, they're all out, except for, except for number three. Number three. Got it. If it said non-positive, I don't think there's any that would qualify either. So it's it's kind of a weird one. I, I mean, I assume your instructor's doing this because he doesn't want you to just go look in the back of the book for the answers. Um, but it it it's not very interesting to like learn because you're just like, okay, okay. The function yeah. is not a continuous one. So let's let's do the same thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> so continuous. Continuous means that you can draw it without lifting up your pencil. That's kind of the, yeah. the like like nice definition. So we're looking for the ones that it that like it's not continuous. We're looking for the ones that that like you have to lift up your pencil to do. Uh -huh. So like this one, this one you can draw without lifting up your pencil. That so that one's out. Yeah. This one is continuous, so it's out. This one is continuous. You might say, well, what about over here? Well, its domain is only that way, so it's mm -hmm. it's okay. This one is nice and smooth. It's out, out, out. This is our first problematic one. See how you, you jump? Yeah. This is definitely one that is not continuous. Uh-huh. 
what's what's that graph called is it just a jump graph or what it's it's they they often call it the greatest integer function it's letter k yeah. it's that it's that one it's the int function it's really not commonly used although it seems to come up every so often in your classes but it's it's really also not all that commonly used this is the more more important one this one so you go all the way up and then you jump all the way down but you have to lift up your pencil uh-huh and that's the point here is these these other ones you can just draw without lifting up your pencil so those those two are um all right And then 18. Graph eight is just like a vertical asymptote. It is, it is. That's exactly right. Got it. 18 says the four functions that are bounded above, bounded above. So what does that mean? That means that there's kind of like a, a ceiling, like that it doesn't go past. Oh, okay. Um, so let me snip them in here. Um, so it means like, like it, it, and I'll give you an example here. Like this one is bounded there. Yeah. So bounded above. So like three, four. Three is bounded above. That that's good. And they're telling you there's four total. For four total. Yeah. This one's this is another. It says in the four functions. So twelve is another one. Yeah. This one's a little bit harder to tell, but that one is bounded above, right? Right there. Is that a horizontal asymptote? It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right, I'm just going to write these down real quick. So if this is everything, I mean, we we're, we're through it. Um, I'll I'll send you the, um, the the word document right away. If there is something else, I mean, we could we could obviously spend more time, but sometimes this happens early in the semester. There's not, you know, a ton to work on. Um. So yesterday in class, my teacher started spitting out all this limit stuff, and I really don't understand it. Um. I don't. She never gave us any homework for it, but. Can you just like explain like what limit is? It's it's a it's a calculus concept. So you you're you're way too far before you would um would want to um talk about that. But I'll I guess I can give you a short example yeah. of a limit graphically. So let's say the graph. Look, uh, I give you a graph, and the graph is that that um, function we saw that looks kind of like this. We kind of looked at one like that and we'll we'll say that's two. Um, the limit is is the the limit is the y value that the graph approaches. Okay. So if I asked you, as this graph approaches zero, this is zero, what what y value does it approach? Um, two. Two. What about from this direction? What's the y value that it approaches? Isn't it still two? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so that's that's a very simple example of a limit. Okay. There are other types of limits that exist. There's limits at infinity. Okay. Um, there are uh, limits at the edge of the domain. Okay, 
So for example, let's look at something at infinity. Okay. Uh, let's look at um, one over X minus one, F of X equals that. Okay, and the graph of that very simply, it's it's got a vertical asymptote at one and then it looks like this, and it looks like that. Yeah. And I, and I could ask you the limit at positive or negative infinity. So, so it's basically like asking like, well, what happens when X gets really, really large? What happens when you put a really, 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 really big number for, for X? Well, a really big number minus one is still really a big number. And one over a really big number is, it's the same thing that the graph approaches. What, what value does this approach? Infinity, positive infinity. That's up here. Positive infinity is up here. It approaches zero. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so like it's like one over a giant number equals oh, zero. A really small number. One over a really small number is infinity. Yeah. Plus or minus, depending on whether it's positive or negative here. Okay. This again, it's way out of scope. It'd be like talking to you about driving when you're 14. Yeah. I, she just like gave us a worksheet yesterday and was like, do it with your partner. And we just had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I don't understand like the wording of it and like the little, it's like the LIM and then an arrow and a number. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a concept that it, I get, I'm trying to very yeah. politely say, don't worry because it shouldn't be covered here. If it really is, we can do more of it, uh, but I'm, I'm suggesting not to. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't want to worry about it yet if there's no homework on it, so. Um, okay, last thing, I am taking AP Bio and our teacher is talking about how we're gonna do like stats. Uh-huh. And I just, she, there was this one word she used like, K limit or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Can you say it one more time or what what do you think could you have? It's like K K squared or something like that. Uh, uh the chi squared. Chi squared, yeah. So the chi squared. <laughs> yes. It's um I mean it's it's I mean, in, in, if you're really taking AP bio, they're probably not, they're probably gonna spend some time explaining this um, okay. to you, but you shouldn't worry. It's very simple. Um, I'm gonna make something up really straightforward. This is probably how you'll use it. Um, well, there's a couple of ways you might use it two, four, and then um, 12. So let's say you're doing something and you get these measurements. This is X, Y, and Z. And you think that they're supposed to be, you're supposed to get the same number of each time, which, but instead you got two X's, four Y's, and 12 Z's. Mm -hmm. So what is two plus four plus 12? 18. So if you expect to get six, this is the observed, and this is the expected. There's a formula that says to take the observed minus the expected squared over the expected. Oh. So for example, it would be two minus six squared over six. And then you do it for all of them. So it'd be four minus six squared over six, 12 minus six squared over six. You add these together, you get a number and you, you, you basically compare it to something. Okay, that's a lot simpler than I imagined. So, um, yes, there, there's a there's a slight variation on this where instead of it being one row, it's a table. But this yeah. is so again, it's kind of so out of scope. Like you're just you, you know, it's like like don't even try not to like. The instructors make these mistakes of talking about things that aren't relevant to you at the, you know at that that time, <laughs> and and you almost just have to tune them out. Like even though you're probably trying really hard to be like, no, I got to pay attention. This is important and. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of maybe shouldn't in the beginning. Yeah. 
it was just really weird to me. And I asked, I was like, is stats a prerequisite for this class? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. And she was like, oh, no, it's not. Well, they might say, well, whatever you need to know, we'll tell you. And yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully they do. Yeah. But but it's very overwhelming. And, and they actually do that in college as well. Uh, maybe your sister's uh, sister or brother have mentioned that. But they, you know, then you, you often end up having to go figure it out on your own if you haven't yeah. taken the class before. Ooh, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I will hopefully have more for us to do next week, but that's all I got. At the Great. It's, it, it, believe it or not, this helps because it, there's like a little five, 10 minute lag to get the, the, the screen recording. Um, I'll yeah. be able to get it to you in the next like 20 minutes at most 30 before my next uh, appointment. So, um, Thank you for booking and uh, um, sorry for the change of schedule, but it worked you know out. What? It was because my mom is in Utah and the time zone is different. Yes. Um, yeah. Realize, but we will do our best to not let that happen yet. Yeah. Um, thank you for scheduling and I look forward to helping you this, uh, this year. All right. Thanks, Matt. Bye -bye. See ya. Bye now.